I am Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of Douglas County Board of Commissioners. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Clearly, our show on DCTV 23 that has the purpose of bringing information to you about county departments, programs, and people. Information is essential to being able to think clearly. Welcome to another episode of Clearly. Today I'm joined in the studio with Dr. Janet Meemark from Cobb Douglas Public Health. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for being here and joining me with my episode. We will discuss details about the coronavirus pandemic and also about the uh, distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine and also the new mass location for <laughs> Douglas County or the um, administration of these vaccines. Thank you so much again, Dr. Meemar, for being here. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> well, good. Well, let's start off with just basic, just basic questions. I have a few for you. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the coronavirus and what is the difference between the coronavirus and the flu? Yeah, so that's a great question. And you remember when we first started this pandemic, there was a lot of um, questions and people were wondering, you know, is it different or more serious, like why are we so worried about the, the coronavirus versus influenza? And so basically they have very, very similar aspects to the two of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, the first thing is that there seems to be a more seasonality with the flu. So we would currently be in a flu season um, versus um, what we have for COVID. Now COVID has not shown any seasonality and really not a lot of effect on the temperature. So um, we had some dips over kind of the spring and summertime, but then, you know, that big surge happened right over the 4th of July holiday. Um, the other most obvious thing is that there are two different viruses, right? Yes. We have the coronavirus family and then we have the influenza family. So two different families, but very similar um, symptoms and, and things like that. Um, one of the things that was debated for a long time was the severity of the, the COVID um, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And um, what we have seen is, is obviously it is much more lethal than the influenza. So at, at one of our worst seasons in this last decade, it was like the, the 2017 season, we had um, over 60,000 deaths from the influenza virus. Now, I, I don't know if you all have seen, but we are approaching 500,000 deaths um, for the, um, the COVID-19 virus. And that's approaching, uh, you know, our most, I mean, it's, I mean, it's pandemic numbers. And so, and probably close to what was happening in, in the 1918 flu as well. And mm -hmm. so just extremely high numbers and, and has taken a huge toll on, on everybody this last year. It has, it's really, to be honest with you, the 10 months have really flown or 11 months. Mm -hmm. It has, I'm just it blown has. away by what we've all experienced. And uh, again, this is uh, a very Once challenging, in a lifetime. <laughs> unprecedented moment for all of us. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the variant that's, that's out there? It's something that's really uh, a lot of chatter out there about the variant and yeah. if you could explain a little, little bit to the citizens yeah. of Douglas County. Yeah, so we know that there are three variants that are in the United States. And so there's the UK variant and then um, that one is actually a little bit more widespread throughout the United States. Um, there's the South African variant, which mm -hmm. last I heard was mostly, there's two cases in South, um, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the Brazilian variant. And so, um, and that is also just a, you know, very small number of cases so far that are identified. Now, the one that we currently have in Georgia and in our district, both in Cobb and Douglas County, mm -hmm. um, is the UK variant. Um, what we know about the UK variant is that it is definitely um, much more contagious than the regular COVID-19. And as, as we all know, that one's pretty contagious, right? The way, the way it is. It's considered to be 30 to 70% more contagious. And now there is some word that um, CDC is taking a look at the data surrounding it, but it may be more lethal, which means it can kill more effectively than the COVID mm -hmm. vaccine. Now, the important thing to know is, so you probably have seen the DPH press releases that it's like kind of concentrating the metro. And that's just, they're doing very small sampling right now. Mm -hmm. So um, the fact that we have, I think it was 23 cases yesterday is what the commissioner said. Um, 
this is a very big undercount of what we really have. Okay, so they're just taking some samples. And so um, it is definitely more widespread than what, what, what we're seeing right now. So we have a few cases, but um, there's definitely community transmission already. And so I know people have been saying, oh, well, you know, uh, you know, why can't we get it tested faster and this and that? I'm like, well, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make a huge number of amount of difference right now because it's the same thing that we need to be doing. So they are getting their COVID test results back. Mm -hmm. So those are coming back positive. And then if there's anything that looks suspicious for the variant, it'll get sent to the specialty lab. But those people are still isolated and such, right? But what's important for everybody to know is that we have to continue with the preventative measures. It seems the vaccines will work, but we don't have many people vaccinated at this point, right? Absolutely. So we gotta continue wearing our masks, social distancing, to wash our hands and not gather. But also it's very important that if you become positive, you must cooperate with public health to be able to isolate yourself and quarantine yes. those close contacts. Mm -hmm. And we've been having a little bit of trouble with that from folks and that's really hurting our community, you know, to not be able to identify those folks and be able to quarantine. Remember when we first started all of this? Yes. We needed to, to quarantine and to, you know, to isolate those cases. And it just goes back to basic public health back again, variant or no variant. We have to be able to isolate those cases. Yes. Douglas County citizens, you've heard it from our expert. It, <laughs> we cannot let our guards down. Let mm -hmm. me talk about, let's talk briefly about uh, symptoms of the coronavirus. Yeah. And then also if you could just uh, layer in symptoms of the uh, variant as well. Yeah, so the symptoms are very similar as, as far as I know right now. Mm -hmm. um, but they often look like the common cold. So you can have fever, chills, muscle aches, that shortness of breath and cough that you mm -hmm. all have heard about. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a runny nose or a stuffy nose. So mm -hmm. and go either way. You can have diarrhea and nausea as well. And, um, and some people, the one thing that is probably um, the most telltale is if you lose your, your sense of smell, that one almost definitely looks like it would be COVID at that point. So mm -hmm. if that, and it's interesting how people have identified that. And sometimes that's the only symptom they have is all of a sudden, oh, I can't smell my perfume anymore. Mm -hmm. And then they get diagnosed with COVID. And that's the only thing that they had. So it's just loss of smell and mm -hmm. no, uh, no, yeah. no taste buds. Your taste buds just kind of just. Yeah, yeah, they just Go to sleep on you. And it takes a while to get back. But some people are also having that fatigue and muscle ache, the things that are very much like um, influenza as well. Okay. What about weight loss or anything like that? Oh, I wish, to? right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I haven't heard that unless they've had like a, the, a big bout of it, you know uh -huh. what I mean? But in a short term, that's not a, a symptom that kind of comes up, um, you know, as a predominant symptom. Okay. Let's, let's just, if you could briefly discuss the difference between the Moderna and the Pfizer yeah. vaccine. So those are the two vaccines that we have in circulation right now in the US. Um, they're very similar, which mm -hmm. is uh, um, interesting. So mm -hmm. they're both in that, um, the class that does the mRNA um, yes. technology. So it produces this protein to help for us to, to fight the, the COVID virus. Now, the, the, they're very similar. People are having the same reactions to the, vi to the vaccines. Mm -hmm. um, the, one of the main difference is how they're stored. So you might have heard about that ultra cold storage for yes. Pfizer. Mm -hmm. Moderna is a little bit easier to store. Um, they both have a 95-ish percent um, um, efficacy, so their effectiveness, right, against COVID and getting COVID. Um, one of the main differences is the Pfizer vaccine, you um, need to get um, um, revaccinated that second dose at 21 days and then Moderna is 28 days. Right. Now, that being said, I know a lot of people are anxious about that second dose vaccine because of the decreased vaccine supply that we have. Yes. The CDC has said you have up to 42 days to get your um, booster for either vaccine. Okay, so we're not doing ours exactly at 28 days for Moderna. Yes. We're trying to shoot for the next week to stretch out the supply a little bit more. So you're at 42 days. Now, things happen, right? So we've had people that have actually gotten sick or been put in quarantine after the first vaccine, and then they're gonna get delayed on the second vaccine, right? right. Please don't stress out about that. You get your vaccine as soon as you can. You don't have to restart or anything like that. The studies that were done were on the minimum amount of time it could be given, mm -hmm. not the maximum, okay? Mm -hmm. So it is thought that you'll be okay for, you know, a few weeks longer. So don't stress about that. Just get it as soon as you can. How are we doing uh, 
with our healthcare workers, our uh, first responders, and our 65 year old year old and over population. Can yeah. you expound on that a little bit? Yeah, for so me? you're talking Dr. about our uh, 1A mm -hmm. group. Yeah, your 1A, 1A plus yes. group, yeah, 1A right? Plus, yes. So um, we think we're doing pretty well with our healthcare workers and um, our long term care facility um, staff and residents. Um, so we have every now and then they'll contact us separately. We had this uh, big catch up period where we tried to get them vaccinated before the um, senior citizens got added on. Mm -hmm. And now it, we seem like that's, that seems to be better um, caught up on. Every now and then they email and we get them, you know, put aside to, to get vaccinated. Now, the 65 and older, we have, I think the number is like 2 million folks that need to get vaccinated and their caregivers are on there. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is, is we don't have enough vaccine to be able to vaccinate everybody. And so that's kind of the, the place that we're in right now. So the state, um, if you don't mind, I jump ahead a little bit. The state oh, yes. gets okay. 150,000 doses per mm. week. Yes. And that gets um, uh, allocated throughout the entire state to 159 counties. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, last week we received, I think it was 3,000 vaccines for the entire county, almost a million people. And that was only second dose numbers. So it's, it's been a struggle and it's, you know, the federal government is, you know, trying to get more of the vaccine out. But so you can just see the number is that it's minuscule to what we have. You know, I think when we, when we had problems with our website and stuff, they told us that we had like 10,000 hits a second or something like ridiculous on the website that would shut it down. So the amount of people that want it and need it and are eligible, it just, you know, far outstrips the amount that we have. Right. And I know you've heard that several citizens or some citizens are afraid of taking the vaccine. Yeah. And, uh, and it's not mandatory, of course. Absolutely. However, I know, but it is highly yes. recommended. Yeah. Uh, can you speak a little bit about just herd immunity? Some people are wait waiting on the herd immuni immunity effect. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's a tough one. I think if you're going <laughs> to wait for herd immunity, you're going to be waiting a while. <laughs> I mean, I think that's going to be probably another year, I would say at least, wow. right? They're talking that it's like a, the numbers are like in the 70 percent, 75 percent that would mm -hmm. have to be vaccinated, um, mm -hmm. the population to, to get vaccinated. That's a lot of folks, right? Um, and so that's, I think that's tough to, to, to wait for that one. Um, let's talk about the hesitancy of vaccines a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I heard some really good news yesterday that amongst seniors, CDC thinks that the hesitancy is only 10 to 15 percent with Which senior citizens. That's and I think excellent. that's probably what's driving this, um, this huge uh, demand for vaccines, too, because this generation was a little bit different. Like they went through the polio vaccine, yes. they, you know, they got vaccinated and, and, and I, I know they're willing, they're, they're wanting to get back to their lives, too, just like we all do. Right. Yes. And so. Um, you know, I've heard people talk about it that, you know, when you weigh the vaccine, right, we know the vaccine is safe in the short term. Yes, we don't know everything about the vaccine, mm -hmm. right? But we do know what it can do if you don't get vaccinated, right? right? And one of the populations that I worry about are, are vulnerable populations, right? Mm -hmm. So our elderly folks, our, um, our communities of color, right? So we know that they have gotten dis disproportionately affected by COVID than, um, than other folks. Mm -hmm. And so we know the risk that you're gonna ri get by not getting it and possibly getting COVID versus you have 95% efficacy to be able to, to get the vaccine and you know what I mean? So, yeah. so you kind of, it's a risk uh, versus benefits of it and, you know, taking your chances with getting COVID or taking your chances with, with getting the vaccine. We know one is definitely, you know, a potentially bad outcome, right? So these are the ways that we look at it. Um, you know, I got myself vaccinated and I was nervous too about it. I'm not, I'm usually not a risk taker. <laughs> and so, um, but you know, I had to make sure that I set a good example and also that um, I have a family to protect, so I needed to do whatever I needed to do to protect them as yes. well. <laughs> and my mother is so excited about her vaccine. It's scheduled February the 15th. Oh, so, so excited. So she's so excited. She's 83. Oh. And of course, I'm waiting on the numbers to change 65 and below. I'm just like yeah. a little below that uh. number. <laughs> then I can get in line, but I'm, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah, very good. Well, make sure working we, in healthcare, we, I had to take the flu. I, yeah. It was just, uh, it was, part of our mm -hmm. job in order to work mm -hmm. in healthcare, you have to yep. uh, get the flu shot every year. So yeah. that was just part of the, the game. Well, we'll so. make sure you, we get yours on camera then. Okay? Oh, <laughs> no. 
I'm not good with taking shots at all. I probably need to be alone with you. And that's it. <laughs> but I will do so. I will uh, conform. Okay. Just had a couple of questions, a few others for you. Do you need an appointment to, for these testing sites? Can you talk about a little bit of the Yeah, the so the vaccine sites process. right now is, it's tough to get an appointment. So, um, you know, just to give you, put it in perspective, um, yesterday we were really excited. The governor announced we had given our one millionth vaccine for oh, the wow. state. So that was great. Um, what was interesting though was the breakdown. So public health has only given a third of those. I mean, that's great for public health, but that means 70% were given by other folks. Mm -hmm. So when you go on the vaccine locator at DPH, you can put in your county or nearby by counties and be able to find um, who is giving out the vaccine. And oh, so good. that's a good way to see because it gets di you know, uh, divvied out to different people. So you can go ahead and check and see the, who's the latest person that has some vaccine. So yeah. It's by appointment only at this point. And so um, there are some folks that have some trouble with technology and, and the internet and trying to go through these portals and stuff like that. Um, for those folks, we're very, very grateful. And, um, and I wanna give kudos to your senior centers. They've been so, so. helpful with our seniors and um, you can call them up on, the, yes. on their line. I have, I have the phone number here, but um, they're at 770-489-3100. Yes. A live person will help you through it. And so what we've been doing is arranging some outreach with them. So whenever we have vaccine, and we did one about a week ago, and they had um, 200 folks that, that came. Yes. And it was great because they didn't even have email addresses, and we got to do it indoors, and that they were safe. And so it was a great event, and they I can't give enough kudos to them. They just did just a fantastic job. And so we're really excited to do things like that. So if you need extra help, they can help you out as well. And that was at our brand new Lithia Springs Senior Center. Yes, it's Center. so beautiful. It is beautiful. And I want to go swimming in that pool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and play pickleball, but I don't know, I know what that is. <laughs> similar to tennis. I okay. It's similar. I understand it has it was some beautiful. Sim similar characteristics of tennis. Okay. Well, I'm so glad it went well. I heard we had 192 seniors yeah. that appeared at the Lithia Springs uh, uh, new Senior Center for the vaccines yes. and I, I heard nothing but good things. So thank you for all you Douglas and your amazing County. staff. Yeah, it was cool. You know, these drive throughs you can go to any drive through and sign up at any site. And so we don't know if it's gonna be Douglas County or not, but at the senior center, it was all Douglas County and that was just tremendous. So we were excited about that. Talk about the three W's. That's been a buzzword mm -hmm. all over the nation. Yeah. Three W's and you have to wear your mask, mm -hmm. watch your social distancing and, uh, distancing and wash your hands mm -hmm. repeatedly throughout the day. Yeah. Talk about, let's talk about the mask. Is it important that we wear double, double layered masks, one layer? Talk about the- Yeah, so the, there's some buzz out there recently about the, the two mask situation, right? Two, okay. So the CDC is evaluating that right now to see the efficacy of having one mask versus two masks. Okay? okay, so that's coming out. If you can wear two masks and you are comfortable with it, uh, you know I don't I don't see anything wrong as long as you can breathe. Um, now, if you wear a regular mask, though, yes. you have to make sure they're two ply. Okay, yeah, two ply. Yes. Two ply. So mm -hmm. two pieces of fabric that are tightly woven mm -hmm. that you um, that you use. Make sure they fit well. I've seen what we call uh, chin guards. No, so no, we don't want them to hang down to the chin. Yes. So make sure your Nothing mask so fits tight. well. Um, these ones that, if like I wear glasses, and so having the nose piece here to mm -hmm. be able to pinch it so that you know it's it's tighter fitting. That's yes. great. Um, things that you shouldn't have is the um, the ones that have um, those vents on them. Yeah. Those are not recommended by the CDC. Um, and then things like this, like uh, material that makes it hard to breathe, like vinyl and stuff that's um, really tight and plastic and stuff like that. Please be very careful of those things. They're not actually filtering the air. They're going to let it go you know, in between and make it really hard to breathe. And also just be cautious of those masks that, that healthcare workers need. So mm -hmm. those N95 masks, um, you know, it really it's important to keep saving those as best we can for the healthcare workers that are constantly being exposed. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, these masks are, you know, you see, I, you know, I don't, I don't wear anything that is, you know, a surgical mask or N95s like I, you know, I do just like you do. You're more fashionable than I am, but we, uh, <laughs> So we, uh, yeah, we can, uh, we can yeah, wear these test. and we're okay, right? right. We don't mm -hmm. have to, we don't have to go with those heavy duty masks. So, yes. so it's super important. And then, um, 
continuing to keep our distance. So you and I have our masks on, we have our distance from each other, yes. and so these are very, very important things. If one of us gets, uh, comes down with COVID, now, you know, they won't call us and say, okay, were you 15 minutes between somebody six feet? So, and it's 15 minutes collectively in mm -hmm. 24 hours. It's not at a time. So you can't do 14 minute football drills. That doesn't work, okay? <laughs> it is a 15 minute collective amount of time. Yes. So we got to keep our distance. And one of the things that we saw from, from this holiday surge is it's the gatherings. It's yes. not... It's not large gatherings, it's the small gatherings, the ones with your family and friends. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones are exp that are you know, spreading this virus further and further. So we need to hunker down, continue, because this variant is out there. Yes. We need to continue to do these things. And I know everybody is so tired, I, I realize that, but mm -hmm. we gotta keep fighting because we have to get, there's this, this balance between will the variant rise and can we get vaccines, more vaccines into arms, right? So we have to buy enough time to get more vaccines into arms and keep that variant down. Yes. If we go back to this, then we're in a lot of trouble once again, right? right. So we just got to keep keep doing it. And I know you're a big advocate for, for oh, these things. Absolutely. So. <laughs> I've said repeatedly to the citizens of Douglas County, this is a marathon and not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And we must keep fighting. And I said, if we take this virus lightly, this virus will take us. That's absolutely So true. it's just, uh, thank you. It's just, just been such a difficult time and challenging time for all of us. Mm -hmm. I do agree with you on the two-ply mask. I want to remind our citizens, when I first started working in surgery in the 70s, we didn't have disposable masks that they mm -hmm. have, the ones everybody says surgical masks. Mm -hmm. Surgical masks is what you have on, mm -hmm. and we would take them and wash them and they would go to the laundry, mm -hmm. the hospital laundry and wash them and they were all reusable masks. Yeah. Hmm, so didn't we didn't have that. any disposable yeah. masks. I'm dating myself, but I <laughs> wanted to say, so what we have on now is sufficient uh, because that's what uh, we wore in surgery yeah. back in the 70s. It was just plain masks like what Lena has on mm -hmm. and what you have on. Mm -hmm. So it is acceptable and it will protect your, your you know, of course your respiratory system. And that's what we're definitely trying to protect. Absolutely. Can you speak a little bit, Dr. Meatmark, about uh, the mass location here in Douglas County? Yeah. We're so excited. We're excited we're so too. Excited. It's, it's taken us a minute to get a location, <laughs> and, um, and it, it, there was some question at the end, but they pulled it together. So we'll be at the, the Sears location at the Arbor Place Mall. Yes. And so in the next few weeks, I know everything was ordered and being delivered, and. So we are starting, um, it should be in the next few weeks. And so this vaccination site will be able to accommodate, you know, several hundred people. Our target's around a thousand a day at that mm -hmm. site. Now, when we get vaccine, we'll be able to do a thousand a day. In the meantime, we're gonna start, we've had to hold first vaccinations for both counties because we don't have vaccine. So we're only doing second vaccine. So people, I don't want them to stress out about their second vaccines because we're, we're getting those vaccines. and we will contact you too. So if you don't get contacted about your second vaccine from us, please reach out to us, we'll let you know. But we're calling, emailing, and trying to get in touch with everybody, okay? So we'll move over to, from the health department in Selman Drive, and then move over to um, Arbor Place, and then it will, it will gradually grow as more vaccines come down to us, and we'll have a great site that everybody can get to. So this site will be available to all the citizens in Douglas County, right? Yes. And all what about the other citizens that are from other counties, I'm just, we just. Yeah, we're not allowed to, to exclude other counties. So, oh, you're not? Yeah, oh. we're not. And that's why um, sometimes when we have to reach our vulnerable populations, we'll yes. do outreach events. And uh -huh. so our mobile van's coming soon too. And so we try to go to other, other places and, instead of um, having you fight for an appointment. So, um, but yeah, you can go to any other site and they can come to our site, unfortunately. So. We know data and analytics are very, very important. So mm -hmm. what are we projecting uh, with the mass site? How many citizens do we think we could uh, certainly process? I think uh, we can do a thousand a, a day. Yeah, day. so a thousand a day is what we're shooting day, for. Yes. And so, and Jim Miller can do at least that too. So okay. you can go to both locations. And so, um, so we're really excited about that. And, um, you know, I, I got a lot of questions about when are we gonna get to 1B? When are we gonna yeah. um, have more vaccines? And what it looks like is, um, the AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccines should come out sometime this month. So things are looking good for them. And so if it happens just like the other vaccines, they'll come out really quickly, right? Yes. So that will increase the vaccine supply. And then also um, 
the Biden administration has um, been increasing and working with the companies to get more vaccines. It's anticipated at least March, April, but things will, so things will be quickly rolling out. We'll have multiple vaccines plus an increased production of the current vaccines. And so it would be springtime and then uh, spring through summer, it looks like that we would get, really get rolling on everything. Speaking of Johnson & Johnson, that is just one yes. um, vaccine. You don't need two Yeah, uh, the single dose, right. yeah. yeah. Just one dose. Absolutely. Versus, so what is the efficacy, eff, efficacy rate on that? Is it 65%? Yeah, or? it's about 65% right now on the first one. So what's important, I don't think the data is complete with that. So I wouldn't be surprised if they get a higher number. So right now they're looking at 65%. But what's important is, that 65% from contracting the virus, but they had like over 90% of prevention of severe disease. Yes. So that is extremely important as well. And so it seems to work really well with preventing people from getting um, just the, the worst COVID. So that's important. That's like our flu, you know, uh, you might get it, but you know, yes. if you don't die, uh, that's a big plus. That's a huge plus. And that will add to our, um, add to our, our herd immunity. Oh yeah, <laughs> everybody wants the herd immunity so they can hide. So you just shared with me the best way to get an appointment. Mm -hmm. You said we need to call and of course be patient. Mm -hmm. And I just want to remind our citizens, please be patient. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and this uh, too shall pass. That's what I'm hoping Absolutely. it happens very soon. And it would be ver on the computer um, right now, online, unless you don't have those, um, that access, then you will call the senior center. And finally, what is the timeline <laughs> for the citizens of Douglas County to be vac vaccinated? And you know, of course, it's just, it's, uh, it's several things. And we talked about it and mm -hmm. I've spoken with the Board of Commissioners. It's all about supply and demand. Mm -hmm. And we're waiting on the supply. vaccine. So it's, it's very, yeah, the supply. So it's, I, I, w I don't want to paint you in a corner with yeah. the timeline, but do we, are we looking toward the summer or what are you? I, what I think are your we'll thoughts? have an increase in the springtime. Yeah, so springtime. I think you'll see people being able to, it'll loosen up and people can get vaccinated easier. Now, when are we going to have one B? I don't know. That's when the, the governor will release those. But I know he won't do it until he gets more vaccine into the pipeline. And so. the one but, uh, B is for the mass population. It's Anyone essential under? workers, which oh, is essential. a huge number of people, because I think a lot of people can can fit into the category of essential workers. So, but um, yeah, I think it would be um, at least by the springtime, and then it would go through summer that we would um, get all of our how many more folks that we have uh, several million more to go. So. And I wanted to capture one more point for the mm -hmm. citizens of Douglas County. I believe this vaccine is not, um, it was not designed for patients, I'm saying patients, but our population below 16 yeah. years of age. Can you speak about this? Because I don't want our, our babies to be vaccinated and they don't need one. Yeah, so the, the Pfizer vaccine goes to 16. Yes, Moderna 16. is 18. Okay. And so they're having questions of when will children be able to be vaccinated? and. Um, I know Dr. Fauci said that it's, um, it's continuing the trials and they're looking at them right now. And so he said probably at the end of the year is the earliest that, that we would see something like that. Yeah, for the for for children. The general population of mm -hmm. below that 16 and 18 year old threshold. Mm -hmm. Mobile vans and yeah. units to go, go out to various communities to mm -hmm. vaccinate our citizens. Is that coming down the pike very soon? And yes, the reason and why I ask, I am, uh, I remember the polio too. I remember, I don't know what we had to eat, a little cube of sugar or something. And yeah, yeah. Have a little dot on my arm, but it, I remember the big mobile van coming to the communities. Mm -hmm. Can you explain if we're going to have anything similar? Yeah, so um, we have one van County? that we've ordered. And so um, that one's under actually a, a grant that's in um, the Cobb County's underserved areas. It's at yeah. CB, yeah, CBG that grant. Unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll have to look at it. took over a year to get that one So because of production issues. So we'll have to look for Douglas County. We don't actually have the van that goes out, but we actually, we go out as a team. And so we bring it to different locations. Yeah. And so um, we will definitely do that in, in different areas where it's needed. So the nice thing is our, t our team is very mobile. So it's not that hard that we can just bring the supplies to the community. Yes. So it's a similar concept, but the outreach that we'll be going out. So we'll do in different churches and different um, community areas and things like that. So wherever you guys identify or the community says, listen, this is an area of need, 
then we will go out and, and do that. So. And I believe you're partnering with our uh, pharmacies, the CVS and um, yeah. Walgreens. And yeah, the federal, they have a federal program that's going to them. Yes. And then we partner with everybody else and, uh, and whoever is, is uh, needing help with the vaccination process, we, we try to help with that too. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Neemark. Would you like to make any final remarks? Yeah, I mean, I just want to thank everybody. I know this has been a really, really long year, and I and people always say that I don't have good news all the time, and you know, things are are getting better in our cases and in our hospitalization rates, and and so, um, but we we just need to be careful because that variant is here, and please, I'm, I'm hearing. I know that people are really tired, and I hear chatter that you know they're they're not wanting to do any of these recommendations anymore, but. I'm really, I'm, I'm at the point of just begging people because I'm, I'm tired too. And so, yes. and I don't know if I can take another surge. Honestly, I don't know if our hospital folk can take another surge. So please, let's all help each other and take care of our community by just doing all the things that we're doing right now. And I, it'll be so much better if we can do that. So thank you. And, and let's just keep going. The vaccine's here. We just got to wait a little longer so we can get it out to everyone. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Neemark, for coming today. And uh, the citizens of Douglas County and the Board of Commissioners really appreciate you bringing this information to us. We are excited about the mass location coming down the pike very, very soon. We're excited about uh, all the vaccinations that have uh, occurred so far in Douglas County, or should I say that have been administered mm -hmm. in Douglas County. So again, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And we are just, this is our second win. <laughs> we will pace ourselves until we get to the finish line. Mm -hmm. And I'm just uh, very confident that Douglas County is a resilient county and we will survive this. So thank you for coming in. Thank you. And I will be working with you out uh, with the citizens trying to promote and do what if, uh, whatever is necessary thank to you. make sure that we inoculate all the citizens of Douglas County, not only uh, Douglas County, but in Georgia mm -hmm. and in these United States.